Medterm presents a surgery lecture on hernia. From Bailey and Love's Short Practice of Surgery, 26th edition, Chapter 60. Patients with hernia are commonly encountered in the surgery wards and it is an important examination topic. This lecture is divided and covers all the aspects from UHS written exam point of view and Viva and Long case as well. What is an abdominal hernia? A hernia is the bulging of part of the contents of the abdominal cavity through a weakness in the abdominal wall. What are the causes of hernia? Causes of hernia include basic design weakness. Weakness due to structures entering and leaving the abdomen. Developmental failures. Genetic weakness of collagen. Sharp and blunt trauma. Weakness due to aging and pregnancy. Primary neurological and muscle diseases. Excessive intra-abdominal pressure. Subhernia. Types of hernia by complexity can be occult, not detectable clinically, may cause severe pain. It can be reducible, a swelling which appears and disappears. Or it can be irreducible, a swelling which cannot be replaced in the abdomen. It has high risk of complications. It can be strangulated, painful swelling with vascular compromise, requires urgent surgery. Or it can be infarcted, when contents of the hernia have become gangrenous, this has high mortality. Examination of hernia. It is very important to have a firm grip of the examination sequence. A demonstration video of hernia examination will be uploaded soon. Do not forget to check for reducibility, cough impulse, tenderness, overlying skin color changes, multiple defects as well as on the contralateral side, signs of previous repair, scrotal content for groin hernia and the associated pathology. Discuss the investigations. Investigations can be carried out but mainly the diagnosis of hernia is clinical. Plain x-ray is of little value. Ultrasound scan can be done and has low cost but is operator dependent. CT scan is done for incisional hernia. MRI scan, good in sportsmen's groin with pain. Contrast radiology, especially for inguinal hernia and laparoscopy is useful to identify occult contralateral inguinal hernia. Manage hernia. Management, not all hernias require surgical repair. Small hernias can be more dangerous than large. Pain, tenderness and skin color changes imply high risk of strangulation. Femoral hernia should always be repaired. Shows a diagram which illustrates the sites of abdominal wall hernias, common in red and rare in black. Incisional and peristomal hernias can be found at various sites. Now we will section of our lecture video, the inguinal hernia. Its surgical anatomy, types and management. Most common hernia. Two basic types. 1. Direct inguinal hernia. 2. Indirect inguinal hernia. Totally different in anatomy, causation and complications. Inguinal hernias occur above the inguinal ligament. This can be congenital or acquired. The congenital inguinal hernia are further divided into indirect and lateral. Acquired inguinal hernias can be direct, medial, and sliding, lateral. Anatomy of inguinal canal, oblique passage. It extends from the deep inguinal ring downwards and medially to the superficial inguinal ring. It is about 1.5 inches 4 cm in length among adults. Lies parallel to and immediately above the inguinal ligament. Ring. An oval opening in the facet transversalis lies approximately 0.5 inches above the inguinal ligament midway between the anterior superior iliac spine and the pubic tubercle. Official inguinal ring, triangular shaped defect in the aponeurosis of the external oblique. It lies immediately above and medial to the pubic tubercle. Shows the superficial inguinal ring. Walls of inguinal can Posterior wall, external oblique aponeurosis. Posterior wall, conjoint tendon medially, facet transversalis laterally. Roof, arching fibers of internal oblique and transversus muscles. Floor, inguinal and lacunar ligaments. The various walls of the inguinal canal. What are the through inguinal canal? In males, spermatic cord. In females, round ligament of uterus to pass from the uterus to the labia majora. Three important nerves, ilioinguinal, iliohypogastric, genital branch of genitofemoral nerve. 
contents of spermatic cord, vas deferens, testicular artery, testicular veins, pampiniform plexus, testicular lymph vessels, autonomic nerves, remains of processus vaginalis, cremasteric artery, genital branch of genitofemoral nerve, artery of vas deferens, contents of spermatic cord. What are the coverings of external spermatic facet derived from external oblique muscle and attached to margins of superficial inguinal ring? Cremasteric facet derived from internal oblique muscle. Internal spermatic facet derived from facet transversalis and attached to the margins of deep inguinal ring. Processusvaginalis, it is a peritoneal diverticulum formed in fetus that passes through lower part of the anterior abdominal wall to form inguinal canal. Tunica vaginalis, lower expanded part of the processus vaginalis. The of tunica vaginalis becomes shut off from the upper part of processus just before birth. The tunica vaginalis is thus a closed sac invaginated from behind by the testis. Now we will discuss the indirect inguinal hernia, more common than direct inguinal hernia. Most common in children and young adults. The hernial sac enters the inguinal canal through deep inguinal ring and lateral to inferior epigastric vessels. This figure shows the normal anatomy of the structures forming the boundaries of indirect inguinal ligament. The sac is narrow. The hernial sac may extend through the superficial inguinal ring above and medial to the pubic tubercle. The sac may extend down into scrotum, scrotal hernia. Discuss about the direct inguinal hernia. It is acquired, caused stretching and weakening of abdominal wall. Lies medial to inferior epigastric vessels, Hasselbach backquote S triangle. Broad based, unlikely to strangulate. Boundaries of Hasselbach backquote S triangle. Laterally, inferior epigastric vessels. Medially, lateral border of rectus abdominis. Inferiorly, inguinal ligament, abdominal wall here consists of only transversalis fascia covered by external oblique aponeurosis. What is a sliding hernia? Hernia due to weakening of abdominal wall. Occurs at deep inguinal ring, lateral to inferior epigastric vessels. Contains retroperitoneal fatty tissue or sac has formed secondarily. Words about pantaloon hernia. Both lateral and medial hernias are present in same patient. Hernia. Types, lateral, oblique, indirect, medial, direct, sliding. Origin, congenital or acquired. Anatomy, inguinal canal. Classification, latest European hernia society. Diagnosis, usually clinical but radiological in special circumstances. Surgery, open and laparoscopic. Differential diagnosis. Femoral hernia. Lymph node groin mass. Saphina varix. Vaginal hydrocele. Hydrocele of the cord, varicocal, undescended testis, lipoma of the cord. Clinical diagnosis, usually no diagnostic tests required. Occasionally required investigations, cord, MRI, herniogram. For inguinal hernia, herniotomy, herniorophy, open suture repair, open flat mesh repair, Liechtenstein, open complex mesh repair, plugs, etc. Open preperitoneal repair, stopa. Laparoscopic repair, TEP, tap. H. E. O. M. Y. In children who have lateral hernias with a persistent processus. Remove and close the sac. H. E. R. N. I. H. Y. Suture repair for inguinal hernia. Types, darning repair. Bassini repair. Shoulders repair. Desarta repair. Halsted's repair. Lytle repair. Hair. Conjoint tendon and inguinal ligament are sutured with non-absorbable suture in continuous figure of eight sutures. Hair. The conjoint tendon of transversus abdominis and internal oblique muscle is sutured to the inguinal ligament. Bassini repair is shown in this figure. Multilayered repair of posterior wall of inguinal canal with a continuous running suture technique. Transversalis fascia is opened by central incision from deep inguinal ring to pubic tubercle and then closed to create a double thick, two layered posterior wall, double breasting. This figure shows shoulders repair. 
One to two cm strip of external oblique aponeurosis lying over the inguinal canal is isolated from the main muscle but left attached both medially and laterally. It is then sutured to the conjoint tendon and inguinal ligament, reinforcing the posterior wall of the inguinal canal. As the abdominal muscles contract, the strip of aponeurosis tightens to add further support to the posterior wall. Bassini repair plus reinforced by suturing the two leaflets of external oblique together behind the cord. Lytle repair. Plication of the facet transversalis deep ring. Flat mesh repair. Synthetic polypropylene mesh is used to reinforce hernia repair. The surgeon enters the inguinal canal by opening its anterior wall, the external oblique aponeurosis. The spermatic cord is dissected free, sac is separated from cord, opened and any contents reduced is then sutured closed at its neck and excess sac removed. A piece of mesh is placed over posterior wall, behind the spermatic cord and is split to wrap around the spermatic cord at the deep inguinal ring loose sutures hold the mesh to the inguinal ligament and conjoint tendon. These are the steps of hernia surgery. The incisions may Mesh. Closure of the incision. What are the advantages of mesh repair? Lowered recurrence rates. Accelerated post-operative recovery. P-R-E-P-E-R-I-T-O-N-E-A-L repair, stop a repair. Used with mesh reconstruction. Used for recurrent hernias. INGINAL hernia repair total extraperitoneal approach TEP. Transabdominal approach TAP. In both, the aim of surgery is to reduce the hernia and herneal sac within the abdomen and then place a 10 by 15 cm mesh just deep to the abdominal wall, extending across the midline into the retropubic space and 5 cm lateral to deep inguinal ring. The mesh covers Hasselbox triangle, deep inguinal ring and the femoral canal. TEP, the surgeon is able to create a space just deep to the abdominal muscles without entering the peritoneal cavity. In TAP the surgeon enters the peritoneal cavity then incises the peritoneum above the hernia defects and reflects it away from the muscles, essentially entering the same space as in TEP. Once the hernia is reduced, an identical mesh is inserted and the peritoneum closed over the mesh. Here shows the laparoscopic view of indirect hernia. Laparoscopic repair reduced pain. Rapid return to full activity. Reduced incidence of wound complications of infection, bleeding and seroma. The inguinal hernia surgery for painful irreducible hernia which may progress to strangulation and possible bowel infarction. Open surgery is preferred. The inguinal hernia surgery can be divided into early, medium, Late complications. Early bleeding damage to inferior epigastric or iliac vessels. Urinary retention. Femoral nerve blockade by over-enthusiastic infusion of local anesthetic. Complications seroma formation, inflammatory response to suture or mesh. Wound infection. Hernia recurrence. Chronic pain, pain present three months after surgery. Careful identification and protection of all the three nerves passing along the inguinal canal reduces the incidence of neuralgic pain. Testicular infarction due to testicular artery damage. This completes our lecture. Stay tuned for the remaining two sections and a demo video of examination. For watching, subscribe to our channel for more videos and click on the bell icon for latest updates.